In this video, we're getting back to working on old Trash Fire International. The International Fire Truck that, well, had coolant coming out of the exhaust. So what we're going to be doing is testing the EGR coolers, taking off a bunch of parts, inspecting them, trying to get this thing out, and basically critiquing International engine design the entire time. Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel. And we've got international problems, folks. You guys sound like you want to hear me complaining and working on an international. So we got that fire truck. Need to figure out how to test the EGR system and determine if the coolant's coming out of the cylinder head or coming out of the EGR cooler. So let's go do it. So here we are, start of the day. And we're trying to pressure test the EGR cooler, which is this huge housing that, I'm going to have to zoom in, this guy right here, the aluminum housing. That's your EGR cooler. Now it's got several coolant lines that go to it. There's two main coolant lines. Looks like goes between that and the front structure. I can't really see the front structure portion. Uh, I can see the lower one. And that one actually bolts in. Hopefully I can get that one out. But I'm gonna try and cap those off and then pressurize this vent line right here, right there. And if not, we're gonna have to take that off. Now they have their superior technology under perpetual improvement development program on all of their international engines, folks. And that's like International's program for really getting this engine to be really easy to work on and have really brilliant design on all their uh, products. So what I'm doing here is trying to get the alternator off, which means I have to get the serpentine belt off. And serpentine belt tensioners are a great idea. However, getting them off and on always seems like there's just never enough room to pull the belt off and then get your wrench off. They're a real pain in the butt. But I did get the serpentine belt out. So what we're doing here is pulling the alternator. Now, a lot of times I like to pull the wiring off the alternator first, but on this one, I can't really get to the wiring that easily because there's so many hoses and stuff in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I have to pull it and then pull the wires off. Now you might be saying, well, why don't you pull all the coolant hoses and stuff out of the way? Because I am going to be trying to pressure test the cooling system or the EGR cooler by itself. So if I take all the hoses off, I'm probably gonna have to put them all back on just to test the system. So what we're doing here, like I said, is just taking the wires off and then we're gonna pull this alternator out of the way and then I gotta pull the bracket that holds the alternator on and hopefully be able to get to the coolant tubes that go to the EGR cooler. So I can get the wiring off here. Now folks, you might be wondering like, oh, you're really dumping on this truck. I'm not dumping on this truck in particular. There's nothing wrong with this customer. There's nothing wrong with this particular fire truck in, I mean, it has coolant coming on the exhaust. The problems with internationals is the actual design of them. Whoever's in charge of creating these monstrosities and they put the engine in the chassis. You can't even blame like, oh, well, you know, the chassis manufacturer really screwed it up or the engine manufacturer really screwed it up. They make the engine and the chassis. So it's, it's not a problem. Like it's not a problem with the customer. It's a problem with the manufacturer themselves. They're just pain in the butt. Now what I'm doing here is I am pulling the tensioner off. The, I gotta pull the tensioner off because that bracket that holds the alternator on has some bolts that hold it on and they go through the front structure. And they're really fun, and I'll show you why they are really fun. So this is the bracket I was talking about, this big piece of aluminum, and it blocks the hoses there that go to the EGR cooler. And I took the tensioner off, which is that guy, and I took one of the bolts out. Now you can't really tell how many bolts hold it in, but I'm gonna be showing you where they are and how, how great of a design it is. So here's one of them. You probably don't see it, because it's, it's in a bad spot. Right there, see it? behind the wires and also behind the idler, which means I have to pull the idler off just to get to that bolt. And here's the other one you cannot see from the front. It's recessed in there. <coughs> yeah, that's a pretty easy one to miss. I bet that's never been broken off, someone trying to take it off. But there's actually four that hold that bracket on. One of them goes through what looks like the water pump pulley. And none of them, except for the one, is really even visible. It's really, really brilliant design. That's using their, uh, what, what was the acronym again? Superior Technology Under Development, uh, International, some, whatever, it's stupid. So here we go. Bolts are off. We can now see if we can get this tube off. And at this point I realized that 
No. You see, it's a solid steel tube with an O-ring going from the EGR cooler to the front structure. So you can't move it either backwards or forwards without pulling either the EGR cooler or the front structure. Really awesome design, guys. I hope that tube never leaks or else you'll be pulling one of these stupid things off. Really, really brilliant design. Thing sucks! You said it, Bill. Now, what I'm doing here is I was like, okay, well, we can't do that. I don't want to pull the EGR cooler just to test it. So I got a clear line here. And what we're going to do is vacuum test it with water in the system and see if we can get air bubbles. Now, I had to cap off the back of the EGR cooler. So I put the re or the after treatment de uh, not depth, fuel injector back in. Now, this idea actually came from this subscriber, Freeride202, and he said... One test I have used to diagnose a failed EGR core is slightly drain the coolant and use an airlift to pull back in the system. If you hear bubbles coming out of the coolant line or the cooler, you have found the issue. Now what I did is I just added a clear hose to this. Way to go, dude! So I wanted to say thanks to uh, him for telling me that's a really good idea. So that's what I did. And what we're looking for is, obviously air bubbles are lighter than coolant or water. So what we're doing is pulling a vacuum. And if you keep getting air out of the EGR cooler, there's really only one way that's getting in, and that's through either the exhaust or the intake side of the cooler and into the cooling system. Can't come through the head, because obviously the head is above the EGR cooler. So at this point, basically, we know the EGR cooler has to be removed and tested, and that it is destroyed. This week's Destruction of the Week comes from James. There's also two different ones, but this is actually an international engine that he's working on. And as you can see, it's got some really bad problems. So it looks like it dropped the valve here on number six, went into the cylinder. Of course, that creates all sorts of problems for the piston and the valve and the cylinder head. Pretty bad day for uh, James there, but it is an international. At least it's not a cat. Now, this next one was sent to me by Todd. And anytime you see a train, folks, you know something bad's about to happen. Now, it was basically a series of pictures with a story. This was going through a town, and this launched out of the train. Also, he sent a picture of someone's roof that was by the train tracks. And what do you think went through the roof there? What do you think it was? Well, obviously something, and it had to do with that piece that launched out of the train there. And this is what's in the wall. Look at that. That's the piston. Shot out of the train, went through the roof and into this person's wall. Pretty crazy. Thought that would uh, be pretty interesting. So what we got to do now is pull these turbochargers. And you can see the oil return and supply lines here. And they're a real interesting design because they are connected. Both supply lines are connected and both return lines are connected. Here's the supply. You know, couldn't have done like maybe one that comes off. No, they had to be. Definitely had to be connected like that. That really makes it easier when you got to put two ports in at once. So we're going to uh, store these away where they're supposed to go. Okay, maybe maybe we should reuse these and put them in the parts tray. And then we're going to work on getting the return lines. Now, the two return lines are actually not very difficult to get to on the bottom. And they're really only held in by O-rings on the top part. Well, in the bottom section of the turbo. This looks like a, uh, a oil... Uh, centrifuge, I believe is how it's pronounced. So these are your turn lines. I'm assuming, although it turns out to be wrong, that this is probably the easiest part of this job because all I have to do is pull these off and then pull the tube off. Now I've pulled hundreds of turbo oil return lines, folks. Uh, that's where I drain the coolant, by the way, out of the oil cooler. But I never had this happen to me. Oh, God! Ah! Great, great. Yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, about a gallon came out of there. That was pretty exciting. Really enjoyed getting oil all over me and all over the ground there. Great, great design. There's my glove that got saturated with oil. I guess we ought to reuse these too. Let's place these in the parts tray. Just some awesome designs here, folks, from these brilliant engineers at International. Now, this is our turbo setup here. This is a compound turbo system, lower one. Seems we spent it fine. However, yeah, yeah, that's not real good, folks. The upper one is basically locked. It, you can get it to turn a little bit, but that sucker is not free. So basically, at this point, I would recommend replacing both turbos because obviously something's happened. 
Now these stupid spaghetti lines, these like 16th of an inch air plastic hard lines are everywhere and they suck. They're everywhere and like you look at them and they just break off whatever they're connected to. They're a really bad design. Now the bolts here's are actually not, well they're actually nuts with studs, are not impossible to get to. They're not the worst, however the cab being like over them doesn't help. They're actually not that hard to get to. However, they are so freaking tight. They were like, I don't know what they torqued to, 10 billion foot pounds or something. I had to use like a half inch breaker bar to break those suckers loose. Man, they were super tight. Um, it only has three bolts that hold the flange on for the turbo, which is a little weird because it's a triangle, not a square. Um, can't, can't really say that's a bad design, but unusual, I'll say. And we got this sucker out of here. That is one heavy uh, arrangement there of both turbos getting pulled at the same time. And let's go take a look at it. So you can see it on the table now, a little bit better. And you can see, yeah, this upper one, which I believe is a high pressure one because it has a wastegate on it. It's locked up. Lower one is not, but anytime you have one bad turbo and they feed each other, it's a good idea to replace them both because you don't know what the heck's going on there. You can see this arrangement here and you can see the triangle flange there on the bottom, kind of unusual. Yeah, you know, cats are pretty much always square. Um, not saying tri you know, triangular shape it, or a round flange is worse, just saying, a little weird. Uh, one less bolt to get to though was nice. So next is trying to get this enormous EGR cooler out of here. And I got all the bolts I could see out and then I was not really prying real hard but I was just trying to see if it would separate. And then I, it did not and I was like, okay, uh, there, there must be some bolts that I can't see or another fittings or something's holding this sucker on. So got my mirror and I found a couple there on the bottom. Here they are, real easy to get to. Yeah, no, not really. They're actually so long they hit the frame. You can't even get them out or in if it's in chassis. Brilliant design here, folks, of the manufacturer. The one that made the engine and the frame made it so the bolts can't come in or out in the frame. That's really cool, really neat. Now this enormous thing is a real pain in the butt. Now here's that tube I was trying to get off earlier, one piece, and you know where this sucker is going. At least that's where it should have. At least where it should have gone when they were designing this thing was in the scrap bin. But probably gonna have to reuse it. So let's store it away where it actually goes. Now this enormous coolant filled EGR cooler is probably like the closest thing I'm ever going to get to childbirth folks. This thing was a total pain in the butt. I mean the cabs over it. This thing is almost the length of the engine. The back section's cast iron. It's super long. I drain the coolant out of it but you, you know what. Of course it's got way more coolant in it even though you drain it. Now yeah, here, watch how much coolant pours out of this thing when I finally get it out of there. What a pain in the butt this was. Def definitely really fun here, folks. It, it just, like poured down my leg there. I was really happy. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. I was like, are you kidding me? Like a gallon of coolant came out of this thing after I drained it. That was really, really awesome. There we go. It's where it should be, but no, we still got to test it and then probably has a core on it or something, so we're going to have to hang on to it. We're just joking, folks, you know, wouldn't actually throw that away. So what we were doing here was trying to pressure test it. And of course, these take all sorts of weird special adapters to cap these off that we're a cat dealer. We do not have them. So I tried my best to use in these plugs and I was only going to build it to like one or two PSI. But you know what happened? So anywho, folks, I uh, decided that we're going to vacuum test it instead of pressure test it. Maybe because one of those blue caps blew out of there. But, uh, so what I did is I put the glove on there, nitro, not wearing them, just putting it as a test purpose. You can see it's actually sucked in, like it's sucking vacuum on the exhaust side, even though I'm pulling a vacuum on the coolant side. Now, we already knew that the EGR cooler was pulling air in from the exhaust side into the cooling system when it was on there, but since we had it off, wanted to check it. I did kind of a similar test with the engine and the EGR cooler off. That was a real pain to fill it with water and cap all those lines off. But it the engine itself never pushed any water or coolant out of the exhaust manifold, so pretty sure we just got a bad EGR cooler here, folks. Uh, that is it for now, waiting to get approved from the customer. Wanted to say thank you to Edwin and Ahmed for sending donations at adeptape at yahoo.com this week. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.